Do you have an older Samsung TV that makes a clicking relay noise like this when you try to turn it on? I might have the solution for you. You'll need a soldering iron, a screwdriver, cutters and some solder wick. Prepare a flat surface to work on and put something protective over it. Put the TV face down and take the back off. There are several screws around the edge and a couple of odd ones in the middle. When you have access to the inside, you need to look for capacitors that are bulging. Look at the cross on the top of each one. It should be straight, indicating that the top is flat. If the cross looks angled, then the capacitor is bad and needs to be replaced. Bad capacitors may have a black dot of dried up electrolyte in the center. Once you know what you're looking for, they're easy to spot. Unplug the cables and unscrew the board because you need to flip it over to do the soldering. Unsolder each faulty capacitor using the solder wick and pull it out from the other side. Make a list of the capacitors you need, the voltage and the capacity in microfarads. Buy replacement capacitors from an electronics store. They should have the same value in microfarads and have the same capability in voltage or more. It's best if you can get 105 degree ones, but I've had 85 degree ones in my TV for three years and they've been fine. Note that capacitors are polarized. The big stripe with negative on it goes down by the thick line on the circle outline. Put the new capacitors on the board. Bend the wires out a little to hold it in place when it's upside down and solder the leads. Clip off the excess when you're done. Reassemble the board, plug all the wires back in. Screw the back on and try it out and you should be rewarded with a familiar sound. As a postscript, I actually did this back in 2011 but didn't get around to posting this video until now. Then this week another fault developed, a flashing screen. Sure enough, when I took it apart I discovered that one of the capacitors I didn't change last time was now bad. I replaced it and it's working again. Hope this helps.